I want to talk about the curse of Ham and why it's such a brilliant thing and why it will be used against the people who used it to justify their slavery in the modern era in America for example. Okay, so if we go through the story quickly, Noah, this righteous man, the only righteous man before God who is upright, he has this great test of faith, he builds this ark, he trusts God, he saves all the animals, he saves mankind. There's the flood. He invites along his children. These are not the righteous ones before God, by the way. Just, just realize that. <coughs> and then the flood is over. God's just judgment is done. Righteous Noah survives. He goes into his tent and he relaxes. He celebrates. He drinks wine. He gets naked in his own tent. And then his traitor's son shows up. And in his heart he judges his father and accuses him. He thinks it's shameful. He doesn't love his father. You know he doesn't love his father because if he did, he would look at this scene and say, you deserve this dad. You are the only reason any of us are alive because you trust God and you are righteous before him. Instead, he gets his brothers and they cover him up. Like that's something to be shamed of. Like a man can't get naked in his own tent. These are evil, evil people. Who do they think they are judging Noah? And then Noah finds out about this. And this is where the righteous curse happens. And you need to realize that righteous curses are like double-edged swords. They cut both ways. So he curses <coughs> Ham, his son, Canaan. Like the relationship is broken between Noah and Ham, he breaks the relationship between Ham and Canaan. Because now Canaan looks at their father Ham and says, you are the reason we are slaves to our brothers now. What did you do, dad? So whatever love there would have been there is now gone and wiped. And it's because of Ham. That's why it's called the curse of Ham. Even though Canaan was the one who was cursed. Now, some people read this today and think it's a blessing to the ones who now became slave masters. And this is evidence of the evil nature of their heart. Because if you think you are blessed because your brother was cursed, you belong in hell. Like the people who use this to justify slavery. If you believe in Christ, you will realize that it's actually not a good thing to be the master of somebody. It's written in the Bible that teachers take on a great responsibility. How much more does a master take responsibility over his slave then? Quite a bit. And because they were wicked people, they might have taken like liberties with Kana now. And this is something that doesn't fly with God, who is just. So now there's this new way that God's justice is happening on the brothers of Canaan. And uh, if you remember what Christ said, he who wants to be first should be like a slave to his brothers. And this is the curse that Noah did on Canaan. So there's like a blessing in disguise. If Canaan is righteous before God, if his heart is aligned with God, and he submits to this curse, and is like a good servant, is like a good slave, they are blessed in heaven, right? I, this is why righteous people are able to do curses, by the way. Like, they will never stop being perfect in the justice of it. Because of God. God gave them the authority to do this. It's a great story and it reveals a lot about people living today. Yeah, there's a lot of like wisdom in it that goes just past people's heads. Anyway, I hope you liked my retelling of the story. <laughs>